The hard part's gonna be setting that on by myself. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna dive right into setting up that cedar. Uh, yeah, you know, I got a lot of parts ordered. You'll see throughout this what we're gonna have to do. Uh, I figured out that I would start off with, how much did those clutch friction plates cost? So, got two packets of eight. And reading through all the comments, there's a lot that grouped it all together. There's a lot that said this is per plate. Um, and I don't know if some people are just, some people know, or if they're just that lucky, because there's some guesses that were pretty, pretty dang close. Um, two were the closest. They said the same answer. So $309.76 for two packets of four plates each. That equals up to $38.72. Being farm, it's tax exempt. So somebody wrote plus tax on some things. Uh, just to give you a heads up. Um, so Justin Wheatley and James uh, Klein, 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 they were the two that uh, guessed $39. So 28 cents off from it, damn close. So with that being said, just ordered the first order of merchandise. I got to get around to putting it up on the store, but James and Justin... I'll reach out to you on in the comments, and when we get shirts in, you guys will be getting a set of shirts. So, oh, yeah, nothing's ever cheap. I know deer parts are expensive to begin with. I was surprised that they had those uh, discs. Um, I think my plan is going to be to pull that whole head into the shop this winter and just run through it. We'll do the dogs and. All the gearboxes, uh, all the slip clutches, all the couplers, new knives, the drums themselves are still, they still got a lot of life in them, um, and figure out exactly why that one gearbox is breaking bolts. So a lot of good comments in past videos of that. Uh, yeah, let's dive into today's video. Appreciate you guys watching along. This needs to go on that. Ready, ready. Well, I guess that doesn't work in this application. <laughs> Imagine. So, we're going to get rid of these wings because we don't need these wings. We don't need anything from here back. We don't need the three-point hitch. We might use these pins to lock it in. That might be a cool application that the pins go in. So then I can take this on and off because if I'm not using this, I'd rather have this sit inside. Um, the only things we got to do to wire this up, we got to make sure the motor runs. I have a feeling we'll be okay there. But these positive and negative that run to both sides, they're electric clutches, and it just uses two of the connections, and that's it. And then you got your battery power to start it. So. Let's dive into this. Glad I got a plasma cutter. Make quick, easy work of that. And then we got to figure out how we're going to do our pans that actually blow against it. So currently, your product comes out, it hits there, and it bounces against this and it falls on the ground. A lot of them, they come straight in, such as this one, come straight in, and then it deflects it right against the back and it sprays it all out. So, got to see what's going to work. This might be a little trial and error as far as what where we need for height and where we want to be from there. I have a feeling I'm going to mount them back here and spray down because I got more room instead of up in front. But you got to keep in mind, everything has to fold. So let me let me tear this apart. We'll go from that.
Well, that was quick. Plasma cutter, Woo. definitely a must. So I got, I got a Hypertherm 45. Yeah, 45. Been really, really good. I would buy another one in a heartbeat. Spare parts. Cleaned it up. They did use some, like they aggressively welded that. So I just cut it off. We'll probably go clean that up after. I gotta see how it's gonna sit. The hard part's gonna be setting that on by myself. So, one man band. We might be able to, uh, well, maybe I'll put a jack underneath this or some wood. It does sit up that you can put that jack and have it all there, but it might be better to support the tongue than pull it forward and then pick this up and bring it over. I've only had this flipped around three different times and uh, well, I started bending the legs and whatnot. So air hoses out the back was my original plan. Then this wheel was giving me trouble. I'm like, okay, we'll flip it around, run it the other way. Then I thought, you can't run it the other way because everything is meant to cycle without putting an extra chain or an idler or, you know, reverser. So here's my final. I think this is what I'm gonna run with. I gotta figure it out. I gotta figure it out exactly. But I'm thinking, I'm reusing some stuff out of my metal pile. So here's my old shear bar. Cut that off, weld it right in the middle here, bolt through and through, and we're gonna put um, rubber in between it so it cushions down so it can flex some. And then on the back side, I got my three point hitch pins that we get just cut off. We'll have those come, we'll have a plate come out, put the pin up, and it will sit in here and you just put your pin. We'll put a plate right here. And, then hoses run right out the back they'll probably run underneath this way to where they need to go down loop around that's what i'm thinking so i did flip this wheel it was on the inside now we got to go on the outside you know maybe we'll have to change the lugs for some traction well, got to drill one if this works got to drill one bolt hole through the shaft because we switched it around um and put a washer on that end so that this sprocket is run correctly. Well, yeah, I'm thinking that's where I'm gonna go with this. I'm thinking. And then when I'm not using it, I guess this front one could be a pin or it could be a bolt. The weight of it will hold it mostly down, especially if it's got seed in it. I'm not sure how much seed actually will fit in it. So we will find out how much weight wise. Um, I don't think it's going to be a ton. It's not the big model. But when you're doing cover crop, you're seeding it at 100, acre, 100 pounds per acre. So maybe I'll get like six, seven acres out of it. Maybe. I don't think it will even be that. But when you're doing uh, grass seeding, it should be like 30 pounds between the two different ones. And 30 pounds of grass seed and clover. Well, it's like 20 pounds of clover and like six or seven pounds of 20 pounds of fescue and six or seven pounds of clover, I think was what I, we were going out. But then you'll fit a lot in there. But this will allow me to take this right off. Um, maybe we'll figure out a way to make these quick connects. Or maybe we'll just disconnect up in the front, wrap the hoses around, cover them up. And then we can take this off so like if i'm doing there's no point in dragging this around and having the wheel down stuff like that uh if we're just doing prep work for planting corn we're not going to do all our ground like that because as you know it's got some rocks and whatnot and rocks and rolling baskets rough on it front one on that is gonna be pretty slick it's off just a little bit but dang that's working out 
Got a little nighttime lighting out here in the shop. Let me show you what's going on now. It is mounted. So I got one pin in the front. We'll get an actual bolt or a pin or something there. Probably bolt it. And then if we come back here and get you right in here. So I got a bracket going across. We reused everything. And then we got a pin sticking up. So same with the other side. When the time comes that we want to take it right off, well, probably weld some hooks to it. So you could put two hooks here or a chain over and a chain over the other side and come in and just pick it up and back out. But unclip that, probably unbolt that front, and away it will go. So what I got left to do, run the hoses, figure out the deflectors in the back, um, run lines to the front, or power to the front to run everything. And we gotta drill a hole in the shaft on this because as you see, it's turning. I'm not turning that because I uh, switched that shaft around. So the hole that it was using for a cotter pin is not there any longer. And then on the actual rolling baskets, we got two springs to fix. Otherwise, hopefully, everything's good to go. That, that progress there is pretty sweet. Um, and it's heavy enough that, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it might wiggle around a little bit, having the gap there. But once it's loaded with, I don't know how much seed we're actually going to be able to fit in it. I guess we'll see. If it comes, if this works really well and we want more capacity, I'll cut this box right here and we'll extend it up. I don't know, another two foot, three foot. And then we'll have capacity where I can run. But probably going to end up putting the bags of seed in the tender so then I can just pull up to it and un unloading it getting bulk bags 2,000 pound bags of triticale seed and for uh, grass if we get to it with this it'll be pretty easy too but yeah I guess that is gonna do it so appreciate you guys watching along today got back into some wrench inside of it wish I was kind of chopping corn still I got a lot of things to do but chopper we're going to have to dive in and fix that. Or I'll just leave the head. Um, and this winter, I'll bring it in the shop and we'll go through 100% everything on it. Because now I know exactly what I need to do to all of it. So it will cost some. But that head's been pretty good to me for what, what I paid for it. Um, probably that head's chopped as far as what I've done uh 9000 tons of feed 8 8 to 9000 tons of feed probably I'm trying to think the years I've had it and how much I've had two seasons maybe 8 um so I spent 40 I've been into it for like $4600 now really not bad and it sure beats that chain head cuz that's a headache and a nightmare but appreciate you guys watching along we got more of this. I got to go to work this week. I've been off. So I got a lot of things to do. So hopefully I can keep up the daily content. We might have some short videos of updating what's going on. Um, but we got manure hauling. We got this to do. We got fall tillage. I got tractor split. I got a lot of things. So appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, being part of everything. And I'm excited to run this setup. Hopefully it works as the way it should. I think it will. We'll work some bugs out of it and whatnot. Got to get some parts ordered in the morning. But yeah, hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you on the next one.